Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to the second tournament. We're going to be starting the second tournament picking very soon. First, a few things about the tournament. Um, a question I get a lot is, why can you not just have multiple design classes or multiple designs represent a single class? Why can we not just have, I don't know, three to five different designs picked from each nation? I'd love that. I'd love that. The problem is with Dreadnoughts itself. It's the game. The game says um, you have a battleship class. Great. You have a battle cruiser class. Great. You can only have one of those designs per class represent the actual class. So even if I add, I don't know, 50 battle cruisers, it's going to go, okay, uh, here's 50 battle cruisers, but you're only going to get the same one design. Unfortunately. I'd love to see it different, but this is just the nature of the beast, and I can't change that. Uh, speaking of the nature of the beast, the nature of the beast runs... <laughs> Sorry, the game runs on version 1.3.9.9. That's what you guys sent in designs under. However, 1.4, so the next version of the game, is on the horizon. It's going to be coming out soon-ish. Um, relative to the time when I'm recording this, it's going to be next week planned. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to con record all the content for the tournament inside one week. I kind of doubt it. So this means that either part of the tournament is going to be run under 1.4... Um, or it's going to have to be redone because designs might no longer work. Um, if it comes to the latter, I will add uh, to the community page a, another poll saying, hey guys, uh, it didn't work, some designs broke, we're going to have to do it again. If it does work, if the designs do work, and we're going to transfer from 1.3.9.9 to 1.4, um, so be it. We'll just have to see how the tournament develops. As for the tournament itself, it's going to be a group-style tournament. This means that we're going to have those those 10 nations are going to be divided into two groups. One group has five ships, the other group has five ships, or five designs, rather, five different nations. You fight every single nation once, and you gain points. You gain points, of course, if you win. There's going to be a very simple way to determine this. Um, if you are able to win, you get a point. If you don't win, you gain no points. I'm not going to be doing anything with, oh, I sunk this many ships. That's going to be a big hassle. We're not doing that. Once you have completed the group stage, you're going to be moving on to the final stage. There's a semi-final, another semi-final, and then the final. Why would you want to win the final? Well, because of this thing right here. This is the Bismarck. It has been sponsored very kindly by the Block Zone. Now, I featured the Block Zone before because I like their projects. Um, I hope that you have, if you win this thing, some room. Um, Bismarck is 1.25 meters long in her entirety. And if you win this, you're going to have to assemble 7,064 bricks <laughs> in order to complete this, this just massive ship. Um, it's been sponsored by the Block Zone. It's been provided by the Block Zone. And I'd be happy to send it to you as the winner. But first, of course, you're going to have to go through all the other ships. Well, most of the other ships. And make sure that your design wins. Speaking of the designs... Um, there are some designs which are a bit borderline in the sense that they, yes, they adhere to the rules. But especially, I think, with the Japanese designs, you can kind of game the system in the sense that you have ships which do 49 knots. They have all the gear. Um, they are well under budget. They have an elite crew. But they're large cruisers. I said that in the tournament announcement. Yes, you can pick anything so long as it's a BC hull, a battlecruiser hull. Um, a large cruiser hull in this game is considered a battlecruiser. So those things might be fast. They might have all the tech. They might have all the gear. But they only have 12-inch guns. I've tested them. They're not invulnerable. If they get picked, so be it. Um, it's going to be an interesting fight. And if the... Well, if you guys decide that for a future tournament, these things are just, I don't know, too broken... Then we can definitely discuss that, and I'll adjust future tournaments if I decide to run any as such. Um, if you like my content, before I forget to say that, if you like my content, if you like the tournament, if you enjoy watching these battles, then please hit the join button down below. Because even with uh, just the donation of one buck a month, you're really helping the channel out a lot more than just watching all the ads run. Just a buck a month, and I'd be very helpful. Or, <laughs> I'd be very helpful. <laughs> I'd be very happy uh, with your support. Anyway, with that out of the way, it is time to start picking the ships. It's going to be based on a random spin design. This means you're going to see uh, a list of all the different nations' designs sent in. We're going to do the, the whole spinny thing, and then we're going to pick the design. Why am I doing it this way? There have been all sorts of suggestions, 
or recommendations of, uh, well, you know, you should have like all the designs face off against one standard design, see how much damage it does, see how well they perform. Um, sure, but let's say I get 10 designs per nation. It takes me 15 minutes to do one of those battles. So you're talking 10 times 15 minutes, that's 150 minutes. It's two and a half hours to pick one design for one nation times 10. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have 25 extra hours in a, well, in any given week uh, to do all this additional content or to turn it into a stream or something like that. So I'm going to be using the random picky generator. And if you have any better suggestions, any different ways of going about it, then by all means, let me know down below in the comments and I'll consider that for future tournaments. Now, with all that out of the way, I think we have everything covered. Let's go and pick some ships, shall we? Alright, here we go. The first section is going to be the Italians. We got Battlecruiser Garofalo, Monarco, Lancia, Impero, Enrico, Ancoretti, sorry, Accoretti, the Spaghetti Secondary, <laughs> in a daze, Italia, Supremo con Fungi, Super Mario, Fiore, La Pasta Spaghetti, Oblivion 2, and Vento Aureo. Let's have a look. Oh. Oh, <laughs> so close for Lancia. It's the Impero that wins. It's the Impero. All right, let's have a look at the Impero. So the Impero class, as designed by Salty Atlas. Displacing 36,450 tons and maneuvering around at 32 knots. She is, interestingly, quite a bit under budget, but that doesn't mean that she's missing some features. She has a high level of crew training, 100%. She has spacious quarters, so eliminating crew on the Impero is going to be very hard to do. When it comes to our main firepower, I'm seeing 13.5 inch 45 guns. With a reload of only 22 seconds, these things fire pretty damn quick. If you look at the AP pen, they have quite a bit of it. HE, much, much less. This is because they're packing semi-armor-piercing shells with a Dunite charge. I am suspicious that this might have been overlooked. Like, um, a TNT does seem to be more stable. Um, it is also more expensive. So, the designer picked the Dunning charge. Sorry, Dunite charge. Autoloaders, electrohydraulic turrets, 24-inch torpedo launchers. Now, torpedo launchers are going to be an interesting asset in this particular set of battles. Why? Well, most ships pack a very high-end sonar. I mean, even Sonar 1 is going to give you a very good chance to detect incoming torpedoes. And since every ship is going to be controlled by the AI, this means most likely very sharp maneuvers to dodge torpedoes. If, however, one of these 24-inchers hits, you're going to be in a world of hurt. This is a 24-inch torpedo that does about 12,000 points of damage, and that is at maximum mounts. Of course, if you're going to be using a torpedo blister, that torpedo damage drops like a brick, um, doesn't completely get negated, and it can still have a serious impact on the battle. The ship seems like a solid contender. She has a couple of secondaries, three and a half inch guns. Um, I think these are going to be more for aesthetics than actual effect, unless the enemy gets to about seven kilometer range, at which point these guys open up. They open up every two seconds, and they can potentially put a whole bunch of uh, fire onto the enemy, like fire damage because they got high-capacity explosive shells. So this has a pretty decent chance to set fires while still having at least some pen. Armor-wise, we got 16-inch main, main armor belt, 7-inch secondary, sorry, 7-inch fore aft, um, bloody hell, 7-inch fore belt, 6-inch aft belt, 6-inch main deck. The superstructure is only 2-inch. That can be a problem depending on if the ship comes up against a secondary spammer. You're looking at 13 inch guns which have been upsized a bit and they have been even sawed off a bit. They've been made a bit shorter. This is going to cost them accuracy, but with a radar rangefinder 3 and a coincidence rangefinder providing a lot of base gun accuracy, this probably won't be an issue. The ship is very nicely balanced, pitch and roll. Um, there is no fore or weight, aft weight offset. It is running at 159% engine efficiency, making it very good at accelerating and slowing down. Although, well, the AI doesn't exactly seem to slow down with their ships unless they're forced to because they are in a turn. So that's the Italians, the Impero class. Let's move on to the next. Moving on to Austria-Hungary. 
We got a lot of different ships. The Shent Istvan, the Slovak Boschu. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Magyar, Elizabeth Petznek, Sisyphus Prime, Leopard, Monrovian Kampfkreuzer, the Bravo, the ZRV, Duna, Invictus, Teufelsbuch, Erzherzog Albrecht, Konrad von Hotzendorf, Prince Eugen II, which I'm surprised is now an Austro-Hungarian ship, Hanenkamm, um, Erz Brasidas, Gotland, and it can't be. Let's see which of these ships is going to be taking part in the tournament. It's going to be the Elizabeth Petsneck. All right, Elizabeth, let's see what you have in store for us. Introducing the Elizabeth Petsneck, as sent in by Rel. The ship, as you can see, has a lot of unused deck space. This doesn't mean that's going to be a bad ship, however. Her main armament is only 12 inch, but they're long barrels. This is definitely going to help with their accuracy. They reload in only 16.2 seconds, and based on both HE and AP pen, I suspect that this ship is going to be relying much more upon fire damage. They do have incendiary shells, they are packing maximum HE shells. Now, keep in mind the AI is going to be controlling these ships, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the AI will pick HE shells. Sometimes they just like to pick AP at longer ranges. It's going to be TNT2, it's going to be a triple base propellant. Um, this is an interesting choice. We have light shells, so that boosts the reload. The ship is packing Generation 3 radar, Coincidence 5 range, uh, range finders, 14.6 inch main armor belt, 4.3, 4.3, and aft, 4.3 main deck. Lots of superstructure armor. Look at that, 7.9 inches. These barrels, uh, actually they're shorter. They're not long barrels. They're minus 20. This thing is very heavily banking on making sure it can spit out as many shells as possible. Even her 3-inch guns, only operating at 6.8 kilometer range, are going to be spitting out probably a lot of HE every 1.8 seconds. The 12 torpedo launchers that you see mounted onto the side of the ship here are 18-inch, only effective out to 10 kilometer range, and they have a visibility of plus 19%, because these things are fast. Fast torpedoes, um, not particularly big, you can see the damage dropped from 12,000 to 2,500 relative to the 24 inches. But it is going to provide more torpedoes in the water. And this could have an impact on the battle in the sense that it forces the enemy ship to maneuver. She herself is very good at detecting torpedoes by Sonar 3. She has an anti-torp 5, Barbette 5, Modern Armor 2, basically all the expensive and interesting gear. Um, <clears throat> seems like a well-rounded ship. Pitch. Good enough, roll good enough, slide for weight offset, but really the damage from that isn't that big. Engine efficiency not as high as it could be, but it gets the job done. All right, the Elizabeth Petsneck by Rel. China is next on our spinny selector. We have the John China, we have the unconventional Formosa, Xian Longwang, the Takeout, <laughs> really Chinese Takeout, the Hai Long, the Hongji, the Tangshan. Shenzhen class battlecruiser, the Wang and the Independencia. Let's see which of these is going to represent the Chinese Empire. It looks to be the Wang. All right, let's have a look at uh, <laughs> the Wang. Introducing battlecruiser Wang as designed by Keek Knight. This is going to be a ship with substantially bigger guns than what we've seen so far. 15 inches. They fire every 45 seconds, far, far slower reload. Their punch is enormous. If you look at the amount of damage that these ships can do, with HE especially, in tandem with the amount of pen that they have, these are going to be very, very nasty guns to fight. Fortunately for the enemy, they only reload in 45 seconds. The ship has a speed of 27 knots, which means that she could be relatively easy to hit. She has a veteran crew of 88. The other ships so far have had 100. She is using Krupp 5, Barbet 4, Antitorp 1. Could be a weakness for the ship. Capped AP shells, nose fuse HE shells, which is not even the end of capped ballistic. So you can get far more damage with HE or far more pen if you wish. She does have 22 inch torpedoes. Uh, are they underwater torps? Where are your torpedo launchers at? Yes, she has seven underwater torpedo launchers. 
Um, looks to be the bow. Yeah, bow and three port, three stern. Uh, sorry, three port, three starboard. These are 22-inch fast torps. Basically, if these things get into range and have a firing angle, they're going to be hitting the target very quickly. 22-inch can deliver a respectable blow of 7,500 damage, and the enemy is going to have a hard time dodging them. But, once again, sonar is a thing, and ships are likely going to get alerted very quickly to the fact that there is a torpedo on the way. The fact that this ship has steam steering does have me a little bit concerned, because it means that her turning is not going to be very good. She's going to be fairly slow to react. She has a 53-second course change. If you were to switch that to... Actually, it barely matters. Never mind. Um, the steam engine, steam steering gear is not going to be an issue. Main armor, 17-inch armor belt. No sonar array. That's interesting. Generation 3 radar, but coincidence 4. 7-inch armor belt, 2.5-inch main uh, superstructure belt... Okay, very hefty main deck of 9.8 inch and a 23 inch conning tower. This ship absolutely does not want to lose the conning tower. The main guns, 15 inch, almost 16s, slightly shorter than normal. And the 5.9 inch secondary can hit out at 14 kilometers with AP and 12.7 with HE, reloading in about 8 seconds. And they only have a 3% longer barrel than usual. I think this is going to be an interesting contender. Um, those big guns can hit really hard. The ship itself can get hit really hard because she won't spot incoming torpedoes with any given warning. So, yeah, um, a combination of not having sonar and having an anti-torp 1. It has me a little concerned seeing how well the ship can survive. Oh, and she also has a single hull bottom. So, yeah, um, no additional torpedo reduction there. Let's see how this Chinese battle cruiser is going to fare in the tournament. On to the French. I've had two designs called the Bordeaux sent in, so I gave them a designation 1 and 2 to separate them. We have the Montcalm, Le Croissant, Saumur, 13.9 inch croissants. Uh, the Saint Thomas d'Aquin, Le Rouc, Talon, Challenge, Le Chatard, Mitch Tourneur, Grand Bateau, Le Poisson Magnifique, by the Chesapeake, Bordeaux again, The Bakery, and Macaron. Let's see. So far we haven't really seen any really big guns just yet. It's gonna be... Oh! <laughs> so close. Le Poisson Magnifique. Let's have a look at the magnificent fish. Le Poisson Magnifique. As sent in by Le Flatfish. Definitely French design. Very serious recognition of that, uh, you know, that, that specific... I don't know, that specific French layout. You just got the tower build, you got the focus on frontal quadruple barrel turrets, and, well, we're getting some serious big guns with Le Poisson. This thing has 65 second reload, and it pumps out 12 shells when all these guns get to fire. All these guns do seem to have pretty decent angles of fire as well, so that might be helpful. They have an okay amount of armor piercing. Um, to the tune of a 20,000 meter range, 30 inches. Of course, you're going to be looking at angled armor. The ship also has really high HE shells, base fuse. With these, you can pen quite a lot of armor. And depending on where you hit the ship, let's say you hit the superstructure, potentially very quickly eliminate the superstructure, causing all sorts of damage control issues on other ships, making sure that the crew starts going down and that gun reload gets increased. The ship has modern armor, barbette 5, anti-flash protection, anti-torpedo 5, triple hull bottom. She's extremely well protected. She also comes with TNT charge 4, auto loaders, electrohydraulic turrets, 24 inch torpedoes. Again, only three of them, but it can sway the battle to their side. She has a couple of 6 inch secondaries ranging up to 16 kilometers. And some other secondaries in the form of 3 inchers and even 2 inchers. Radar Generation 3, Sonar 3, Coincidence Rangefinder 5, 17 and a half inch main armor belt, plus 163%. That's a lot. 8 and a half inch 4 and aft belt, 3 inch superstructure, and a 25 inch armor on the conning tower. The ship has a lot of armor on the side of the turrets, of course, top and the barbette, so ideally she won't lose any turrets. 
The guns haven't been adjusted at all, so nothing changes there. Overall, I think that's an interesting design. Um, we haven't had the quadruples yet, and I think they really look the best on the French. It's just something that the French do... Well, they do it better than most other nations, because they invented it, if I'm not mistaken. So, is this thing going to be um, a serious contender? Yes, I think so. Um, I'm a little concerned about the fact that she doesn't have any auxiliary engines. You want this to make sure that water pumping and other factors such as acceleration do get, and especially ship repairs, uh, do proceed faster. Not having them could be a problem. Not having them could be a problem. But the trade-off was probably gas turbines. This makes your ship extremely expensive. Um, had you switched to diesels, for example. Actually, diesel would be more expensive. Never mind. Gas turbines, it is. Just under budget of 600 million. Maximum bulkheads, 32 knots. Le Poisson, magnifique. Moving on to Germany, where we find the Kleiner Hammer. Uh, KMS Lauriturni, Lustig Junge, Mackensen, Kanzler, uh, Nobody MBC Plus, <laughs> the Odin, the Prince Heinrich, the Rache, the Rheingold, the Rusting 25, Schreckens Flotte, SMS Bayern, and Sternenfeuer. Let's see what we're going to be adding to this tournament for the Germans. It's going to be Odin, it's going to be the Rache, it's going to be the Rheingold. Let's have a look at Rheingold. Rheingold is designed by Bali 8870. Typical German design, very long hull, with the German 14.2 inch 56 gun. So these guns, let's scroll straight to that, 10% longer, 0.2 inch larger diameter. And with that, they are pretty middle of the pack when it comes to reload, 39.2 seconds. They are very much focused on armor piercing. Look at their AP value. They can really damage ships with AP if they pen. I am generally a bit hesitant about using capitalistic ones because they tend to be very hit or miss. If they hit and pen, they do a lot of damage. They're very effective. If they just hit and ricochet, which they tend to do, at least in my case, that means you do no damage. As you can see, a ricochet. And considering the amount of armor that some of the other ships so far are spotting, sporting rather, um, that is a serious consideration. That's a serious problem that the ship might have. The ship is running around at 35 knots, making her pretty quick. She has a regular trained crew using diesel engines with some auxiliary engine, modern armor, anti torpedo 2, triple hull bottom, Citadel 5. Um, the cap ballistic with TNTs guided by a stereoscopic rangefinder as opposed to a um, coincidence. This is going to be an interesting ship if she maintains her range because she's going to be very accurate at that range. The problem is you don't know what the AI is going to do. Armor-wise, 19-inch main belt, 6.5, 4, 7 aft, probably to level the ship out, 8-inch superstructure, a uh, hefty inner belt as well, 7-inch inner belt armor. That's the first belt, then there's four, and then there's three. So even if the ship does take a hit and gets penned on the main belt, the other belts might still be able to negate some of that damage. She has no sonar array, leaving her potentially vulnerable to incoming torpedoes because she won't spot them in time. With a minimum turning circle of 509 meters, though, I suspect she'll be able to dodge. Um... It's going to be an interesting fight for her. Because no sonar, no detection, those fast torpedoes. I'm not sure. Then again, if she's already taken damage and she's at risk of taking a torpedo, she's going to have already been slowed down, improving her turning circle and thereby potentially not getting hit by torpedoes. So, interesting ship, Rheingold. Average battlecruiser. I think it's going to have uh, a potentially really good career ahead of her. Now, with the Japanese, I've seen some questionable designs, i.e. ships which do 49 knots, which have all the gear, all the tech, and still adhere to the budget. Um, no, they're not exploited, i.e. the design file, as far as I can gather, was not changed. It's just that the game does some really weird things when it comes to Japanese ships at times. So let's have a look which of the Italian ships is going to be taking part. It's going to be the Kaguya Shinomiya. Kaguya Shinomiya. Let's have a look at her, shall we? 
Thankfully, Kaguya Shinomiya is not one of those weird exploity designs. This ship, capable of doing 30 knots, is armed with an interesting mix of main armament. She has 13 inch, which are, well, I hate to use the term secondaries, but uh, relative to these 18 inch guns, they are kind of secondary. The loadout here is very interesting. She also has torpedo launchers on the bow. These are 24 inch torpedoes. And with that, they got a good range, uh, really decent visibility at plus 19%. They're not fast. They are standard torpedo propulsion. I do believe, though, that this means that the bow turret cannot fire over the torpedo launcher. Yes, believe it or not. Um, you're going to have to angle the ship slightly if you want to be able to use these. She has then that, <laughs> that secondary primary gun, 13 inch. Reloading in 20 seconds relative to the 43 seconds for the 18-inch gun, which is really good. These things can deal immense amounts of damage with both AP and HE, and they have really good pen on both. The 13-inchers, not as good, but they reload in less than half the time and can definitely aid in setting additional fires or causing damage to superstructures. Beyond that, she has no secondary armament, except, of course, more torpedo launchers. Again, 24 inches because that goes for the whole ship. Now, the ship is doing 30 knots with gear turbines. She has a decent auxiliary engine with that. No torpedo blister and a single hull bottom. Ooh, you're playing a very dangerous game. 24 inch torpedoes. The shells are using capped ballistic HE and standard AP. To maintain a decent angle between, or a decent range between uh, high end AP shells and those semi ballistics. Light shells to make sure that they reload a bit quicker. They don't need that massive amount of gun range that this thing has. I mean, it's already 37 kilometers and 34 for the HE on the 13 inch, so that should be plenty. Coincidence Rangefinder Hydro 3, so at least you'll see a torpedo coming. Is she going to be able to turn out of the way? Uh, yes, but not as good as the German ship, for example, because she has a turning circle of 627. So that does have a bit of a, a different factor to it. Main armor belt, 17 inch, 7.9 inch fore belt, but 12.2 inch aft. It's almost like the ship is expecting to take hits on her stern, um, but I don't think that's the actual reason. I think the actual reason is this. Um, that torpedo launcher is so far off to the bow that it's going to mean this thing has to get balanced out by armor on the belt. Main deck, decent. Aft deck, fore deck, 0.6 inches of armor. That's not a lot. If this thing gets hit in the bow or stern from a decent enough range, that can cleanly cut through the hull or through the deck, causing potentially a lot of damage to her. Superstructure, decently well armored. Very hefty inner belts. Uh, these are all maxed out, by the way. So she's expecting to take a hit, and uh, she'll definitely be able to tank that hit as well. The 18-inch has maxed out turret armor on the barbette and the top. Not yet on the side, but this armor level should be enough, especially considering you got plus 163%. Main guns haven't been adjusted at all, so no longer, no shorter, no different in caliber. Really interesting design with this additional torpedo launcher. Torpedo hefty. Yes, but I'm far more interested in how the 18 inches are going to perform in this tournament. For the Russians, we have quite a lot of ships that were sent in. Volga, Red Banner, The Best Stuff, The Motherland, The Immortalica 2. Ah, The Immortalica is back. Belarus, Russian Bias, Slava, Penza. And it's going to be the Belarus. The Belarus. Let's have a look at her. Now, for good measure, I'm going to be using uh, the terms Russia and Soviet Union interchangeably. Don't mind me. This The Belarus, 39 knots. So far, I believe, the fastest ship that we've seen. Interesting loadout. Interesting loadout. She has a couple of 8 inches on her stern. Her main armament is all bow. It's 8 15 inches. These reload in 35 seconds. This thing pushes in. That's great. If she's forced to run away... I am concerned about her ability to lay down suppressive fire using those 8 inches. Now, she's likely going to be able to use 9 barrels, because she also has these side mounts. And with that, and a pretty decent HE fire chance, I believe she'll be able to set a bunch of fires as she is not able to bring her main guns to bear. The main guns, definitely on the AP high-end side. 
The crew, by the way, 51. Not too bad, not too good. Uh, capped AP shells with high capacity HE shells, standard ratio of main shells, so that the guns can pick either, depending on what they find most likely to use or most likely to be suitable. Uh, generation 1 radar. That's interesting. The ship is also wildly under budget. 535 million. So, that's really curious. It's really curious. Because you can just pump all that stuff into the crew. And you can still very much improve the capabilities of your crew. I won't touch it because it's not my design. But what I suspect might be happening here is that somebody used a mod while designing a ship. This has caused issues in the past, like in the previous tournament, where somebody said, hey, why did my design not make it? I said it was too expensive because you probably used a mod. Uh, he said, yes, I was using a mod. And then I said, well, sorry, but uh, vanilla ships only. This one might be the opposite way around. She has so much spare budget that I think some parts in, for example, the gun balancing mod or the gun resizer might be more expensive in that mod. Regardless, this is the ship that we have. This is the ship that was sent in. Uh, and if she is not using the maximum of her budget, so be it. Now, I can already hear some people typing in the comments, hey, my Russian ship was better. Um, why is it not getting picked? Random number generator. Sorry, guys. I am not going to change that. If there is, at some point, a different, better way of finding a ship for the tournament that doesn't take me 25 hours, as I outlined at the start of the video, then I'm all for that. Up until such a point, this is the method that we're going to be using. Now, the ship has an okay amount of fore belt, aft belt, main belt, superstructure, uh, nothing too much that jumps out there. Inner belt, not that great. She is using Citadel 4, interesting turtleback armor, relying upon more flat out resistance rather than three different layers of armor. Interesting choice. Slightly shortened main inch or main gun barrels at the um, minus 8% for the 15s, and you got a slightly elongated 8 incher. It's going to be a very interesting ship to see this fight. Now, she also comes with torpedo launchers underwater, port starboard, three tubes per side, using 21 inches. Electrics, so far more difficult to spot, uh, minus 76%. They do have a decent range, but, well, I don't really expect a whole lot of damage from torpedo launchers, generally, simply because the enemy is going to be able to spot them, dodge them, um, and even if you launch them at, let's say, 12 kilometer range, the enemy's probably going to be maneuvering a whole lot, causing these things to miss. Anyway, this is the Belarus, and I'm interesting. I'm interesting. Yeah, sure, I'm interesting. I'm interested <laughs> in seeing her fight. Spain, interestingly, only had five designs sent in. The Franco 3, Pedro Ximenez, El Grande, Santa Maria, and the Samatocapaco. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Thankfully, I don't have to, because it's going to be the Pedro Ximenez. What is the Pedro Ximenez? Pedro Ximenez, as designed by Vilusep7932. Battlecruiser moving through the waves at 30 knots, maximum bulkheads, very high end crew of veterans. The ship is using 12.6 inch guns. Not the best, not the worst. Definitely focused on setting fires, I suspect, considering she has a pretty high... Ch well, maybe not so much fires. She has soft-capped soft, soft -capped ballistic, or soft-capped... Yeah, okay. Um, you sacrifice fire chance to gain HE shell pen. At 10,000 meter range, she can punch through 8.4 inches of armor with HE... Maybe she can set some fires. Maybe she can damage some superstructures. But beyond that, I don't think that she's going to be that dangerous. When it comes to her secondary armament, she has a couple of 5.1s, ranging out to 12.2 or 13.1 with AP. She also comes with torpedo launchers. 22-inch, 11-kilometer range, 66 knots. These are the fast ones. Again, advantages. They traverse very quickly, i.e. they travel very quickly. Um, but they are very visible. So having these things detected early on does mean that the enemy can very quickly dodge them. 
The ship is using um, auto loaders, of course, electro hydraulic turrets, generation three range finder with a coincidence range finder. So sorry, generation three radar, twenty inch main belt. Yikes, that's a big main belt. But her fore belt and aft belt are only three and three point nine inches. The decks are definitely well armored. Twelve, six, and six with a five inch superstructure. Okay. Then we also have a 6% uh, slightly longer barrel and a 5% longer barrel on the 5.1s. She has sonar. She will be able to detect incoming torps. And with a turning circle of only 520 meters, she'll probably be able to get out of the way. Her 30 knots also means that she might be slightly easier to hit because of, uh, well, a combination of her size and speed. A ship that is not as fast is generally slightly easier to hit. But not so much so that I immediately think that she doesn't stand a chance. It is going to be interesting to see this thing fight, for example, the 39-knot battlecruiser. Because that thing might be a heck of a lot faster, but that doesn't mean it will win. So, this is the Pedro Ximenez. The British sure were popular when sending in designs. There were 21 different entries. That's a lot of ships. Fortunately, I don't have to go through all of them. We just have to get... One. And it's gonna be HMS. No, it's not gonna be the week. It's gonna be the Empress. The Empress. Let's see what the Empress brings to the tournament. Empress, as designed by Angelmin. Typical British design in the form that they have that lower quarter deck. She is punchy with 15 inch guns, which reload in about 40 seconds. Keep in mind, those dual barrel 18 inchers only need four seconds more. She is currently far, by far, the biggest ship. Uh, 75,000 tons. At least that is when she's maxed out. She's only using 61,000 tons, but the game doesn't care. The game's going to go, well, you can go up to 75,000 tons, so we'll find a way to fill 75,000 tons when you take this ship into battle. She's doing 32 knots, which is very average. Uh, very well-seasoned crew. And... You know, gear turbines, interesting choice. Probably went for the cheaper engines to afford some other stuff, like the bigger ship. Now, the secondary armament of this ship is comprised of a whole bunch of 7-inch guns. These start out with a 20-kilometer range on the AP and then 18.3 on the HE. Defenses, modern armor, uh, basically everything you would expect. Citadel, turtleback armor, okay. Anti-flood only two, not three. Interesting choice. Reinforced bulkheads two, triple hull bottom. She will spot torpedoes, she will spot other ships, but she only has a one generation radar, not three. That's an interesting choice as well. And same for autoloaders versus electrical, or actually both turrets and loaders are uh, pretty subpar relative to the other ships that we've seen. She has a 16 inch main armor belt, five inch four, five inch stern. 6-inch main deck, 3.5-inch bowster, and 3.5-inch superstructure. Conning tower could be at risk, especially with some of those far deadlier guns. Uh, she does not come with torpedo launchers. Her guns are slightly shortened at minus 8%. 5% longer barrels, and she also has, I didn't even cover them, 3-inch guns, which are capable of laying down additional fire damage at a range of about 10 kilometers, depending on what type of ammunition you pick. Inner belt, 4 inch and 2 inch on the Citadel will help stop some. But I am concerned about her longevity. I think that Angelman went a bit heavy on the amount of tonnage that you could get on this ship. Tonnage doesn't necessarily translate into survivability. Um, it does say it increases the ship's structural durability during combat. Yes, but... Whether you want like a bigger ship, such as this one, with more tonnage, or a smaller ship with more armor, well, we can have a whole debate about that down below in the comments. There is something to be said for either choice. This ship, I think, might have a slightly harder time in the tournament than it needs to, had the designer gone for either a slightly smaller battleship or battlecruiser design with more armor, or um, spent a bit more on some other elements, such as getting better reload, better rangefinders. Doesn't mean that she's out of the fight by any means. Absolutely not. So we're going to have to find out how well she performs in combat. 
And finally, the US. We have the constellation, the Jupiter, the main Iowa, Skinwalker, Nevada, Illinois, Connecticut, Bunker Hill, Ohio. And it's going to be the Super Alaska. The Super Alaska. Is there going to be a boosted Alaska class cruiser? Let's find out. And behold, this Super Alaska as designed by Robert Dackey Assassin. This ship, armed with 13.5 inch guns, reloads in 24 seconds. She seems to have a fairly average type of shells. We got high capacity HE and capped ballistic AP. AP for most threats that cannot be penned with HE, but considering the type of threat that she's going to be facing, nothing can be armed or nothing can be penned with HE. Ships like that simply aren't around. Doesn't mean that those shells are worthless, absolutely not. Getting hit by potentially 12 of these shells every 24 seconds is going to be setting a lot of fires, leaving ships potentially in a scramble to try and put out all those different fires. She is definitely focusing on that as well. She's using Picric Acid 3, which focuses on additional fire chance. The trade-off for this is a little bit less HE shell pen. What about her flash fire chance? Because with HE spammers, that can be a risk. She only has a 3% chance, though, so it's not that bad. Her flooding chance is reduced by 83%. Fire chance is reduced. Barbette 5, Modern Armor 1, Anti-Torp 3, Double Hull Bottom. The ship is well protected. And her veteran crew is going to make sure that the ship remains afloat, whatever she takes. Auto Reloaders, Electro-Hydraulic Turrets, Stereoscopic 5 Rangefinder with a Generation 3 Raider Rangefinder to boot. We also got Hydro 3 to uh, detect incoming torpedoes and get out of the way, which you can do quickly at 523 meter turning circle. Armor, 15 inch main belt, 6, 6, 4 and aft, 11 inch main, 4, 4, 4 and aft, 2 inch superstructure. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. The 2 inch superstructure might leave her more vulnerable than she might like especially seeing the high-end HE shells that some of the other nations are flinging. And you do get 158% armor quality bonus. So yeah, it's going to be about 5 inches and change. But even that can be overcome by some of these other ships. The ship also has the inner belts, 7, 5, and 4. Turret armor looks to be pretty decent. Um, I'm saying decent, not fantastic, because I have seen ships which have far more armor than this on their turrets. And the barrels on these ships have been slightly decreased by 5% each. I didn't cover the 5-inch secondary yet, but, well, on these American ships, it is kind of mandatory, because this is just the way that these things usually look. 9-kilometer range on the HE can set additional fires. Again, the pen on these HE shells is almost negligible, but you don't get them for the pen. You get them for their fire chance. So it is entirely likely that the Super Alaska is going to be burning down a lot of different ships. Now, when it comes to who is going to be fighting whom, we have um, in Group A, the US, the UK, Germany, France, and Italy. And for the rest, we got Spain, Japan, China, Austria, Hungary, and Russia. In case you're not familiar with the way that the tournament's set up, this is how it's going to work. We have a various amount of matches. It's going to be 10 matches per group. So you're going to be getting 10 matches in this group. And this is going to be UK, Italy, Germany, France, Italy, Germany, etc. Now I'll try to mix and match these battles to make sure we don't get through group one first um, and then group second. Because you might be waiting a while to see your own design pop up. I'm going to be trying to mix and match these matches. So we're going to be going through them at a decent rate. Um, I don't exactly have a plan yet for how long the tournament is going to run. Probably six weeks or so, depending on how many videos I crank out per week. So, that's the tournament. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have some very interesting designs, very interesting ships, especially that Japanese one with the 18.2s. I am very curious to see how well the rest of the group is going to stand up to this Japan ship. Uh, we got Spain, China, Austria, Hungary, and Russia over there. Russia has that bow-oriented 15 incher, So, yeah, she has uh, some interesting competition, shall we say. I look forward to doing this. I look forward to covering the matches. Um, and I very much look forward to seeing who eventually, after we're all done, moves on to the semifinals and then on to the finals. And who wins the Bismarck, as sponsored by The Block Zone. Speaking of which, be sure to check out link down below in the description of The Block Zone. 
you get anything there um, in use code STEALTH upon checkout, you get 10% discount, which is nice. Um, these projects are not cheap and 10% really adds up. As for the rest, let me know which one is your favorite down below in the comment section. And uh, I look forward to starting the tournament and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the join button and I'll see you soon for more videos. Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome to the second tournament. In this tournament, we're going to have 10 battle cruisers from all different nations facing off against each other. It's going to be a style where battles take place twice. So you do two battles, you're out, you're out. And um, if you wish to support the channel through the whole tournament, then I'd be very grateful. Join me on um, the... or hit the... <laughs> hit the join button down below. Um, even if you just donate one, but I do, then please consider supporting me. Hit the join button down below, even if it is just for a buck a month. That is actually more helpful to me than just watching all the ads, all the nonsense that YouTube throws at you these days. Uh, the nature of the beast with the RPM. Blah, blah, blah. I do have a request. If you want to enjoy the content and if you like supporting my channel, blah, blah, blah. I do have a request for this tournament from you. If you like supporting my channel, now for this...